So at the time I had a real problem with lateness Mm -hmm. and I saw this therapist and she was late (laughs) (laughs) for all three of the sessions that I had with her. Oh, maybe she was testing you. That was real frustrating. I mean, maybe because I had no assertiveness whatsoever. Like you're, you're, you're bold. Like you, you will actively push buttons. I, I'm not in like button, button pushing territory. Are we sure? (laughs) Are we, are we entirely sure about this? As like a bit, sure. But like, you know, you do it because it's like it's in your soul. What's the, well, this? That, that felt racial. Let's let's deep dive into that one. Welcome to Playing House, the podcast about keeping your relationship sexy and secure. My name's Coulter Bouchard. And I'm Dominique Bouchard, and we're a real couple having real conversations, inviting you in as our third. On today's episode, Lessons Learned in Therapy, giving you a free sampler of years and thousands of dollars worth of counseling, and something Dominique has never had to worry about, recognizing when you are the problem. But first, let's check in. How you doing? I'm good. It's the final episode of season two, (sighs) which is a pretty big milestone. We're coming up on a year and a couple of months at least. I looked it up yesterday. I think our first episode was like December 3rd. No, I think it was like November 19th. Yeah? Yeah. Oh, clearly my file labeling needs some work. (laughs) We got to do something big. We chatted about this in the car yesterday. We got to do something big for the one year anniversary. We'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. Well, where's your heart leaning? I mean, we probably won't discuss it on the mics, but yeah, we'll figure it out. Yeah. How are you doing? Hooters? We do like a thing at Hooters. Why not? Why not? Pizza party? I am, uh, I'm looking forward to the hair transplant. I'm a little nervous. I like understandably, right? It's surgery. Yeah. I was watching a lot of uh, TikTok videos about it yesterday. And it seems like everyone's had a decent experience. It's just like, it's going to take a while. It's going to take a while to like look normal again. And I'm trying to come up with, uh, trying to come up with ways to like hide it. Not that I'm ashamed of it. And I'm going to be public about it, but like, I gotta be, I gotta be on camera. I got client projects. They don't care if I've had a hair transplant, sure, right? Sure. So like, so the hope is that they don't shave it. I don't know. I don't know what, like if they can leave whatever bangs I have so that can like hide it. Right. And I could just like do like a hairline transplant comb over maybe. I don't know. Okay. So there's that. I also did seriously consider a wig. Um, but then apparently you can't wear those because it'll tug on the new hairs. Yikes. So, yeah. And you can't wear a hat all the time. People don't like that. Sounds like you need to just relax and, and take some I'm not going to do that. Okay. I'm not going to do that. All right. Well, good plan. I messaged um, Rennell from Woodbine. Yes. Queen Bee Millinery. The, yeah. And I was like, hey, uh, can you help me out with some hat ideas? Did you actually ask her? Yeah. That? I was like, what's your opinion? What do I do? And so she was like, here's some places you could go into. Here's some options. And uh, she's like, I could like make something custom for you. But I got to decide what I want Very first. Serious. Yeah. I mean, we, we, we sell hats on the website. You can't just wear a baseball hat or a dad Listen, hat? Dad hat's fine. But like yeah. when I'm, I got some hosting stuff I got to do like you a month after the transplant. I mean, like a wide brim, you know. A wide brim, like what? Remember like what Pharrell wore? Like... I don't know, 2016, 2017. Those giant, they're almost like cowboy hats at the top, but then they're like really wide. Like a park ranger hat. Yes, 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 yes. What do you think about that? I think it's a choice. Okay. I think it's as a bold choice. I mean, didn't he get laughed at for years about that? Him and Erica Badu? Some people would say that like, if he was as cool as me. and are these people? And as famous as me. Okay. Then, you know, maybe he could have pulled it off, but. He did pull it off, but Doesn't, it took years for us to just get used to it to stop commenting. And then he switched up. Yeah. Hey, just at the time we all accepted it. That's a See, bold move. That's how it works. That's, that's a very works. bold like move. Like I said, it's a it's a choice. Yeah. It's a bold one. What about you watching any like surgery videos? <laughs> for fun? No, I don't I don't put myself through that. I watch happy things. Yeah. You know what I'm watching right now? I think it's called real real mormon housewives or something like that yeah so like there was this big mom talk Mm -hmm. like swingers ring apparently so i i don't know because like i've never been huge into tiktok like that right like i i have the people who i followed like the og youtubers yeah who i followed onto instagram who i'm now following onto tiktok like lily singh and latoya right sure yeah Yeah. jackie aina those those people right fousey fousey who is that 
the, the, the super fit guy who then put on like 100 pounds and then lost it again. Okay, yes. Uh, never been a huge follower of his, but I know who you're talking about. The yes. Levine Life? You I have not the Levine seen Life on TikTok? Yeah. No. Uh, do you think they're still creating? I don't know. Okay, now I got to check that out. But what I was getting at is... <laughs> Um, so yeah, I've never been like huge in like finding new creators on, on TikTok. Like if you, if you come across my for you page, cool. My algorithm did not introduce me to mom talk or like the Mormon mom creators. Yeah. So one day when I uploaded a video and used hashtag mom talk, cause I just thought, Oh, like this makes sense. I'm a mom and I'm on TikTok. I realized there's a whole world. <laughs> it's a whole world. And I don't know the full story yet. So now that I'm watching it on, I think it's Disney plus, whatever. It's a whole world where like they, they this one one creator, she unveiled that like, yeah, I, I have slept with all their husbands. Damn. Like four of us and none of us are innocent. And like, I'm just, and now, now, I'm, now I'm hooked. So that's what I'm watching. What was your original question? Surgeries. No. Mom talk. Yes. Interesting. Because uh, Mormons typically fairly straight laced people. They don't drink coffee. They don't drink alcohol. So they're explaining that in the show, right? Because I don't, I don't know anything about Mormonism. Mormons. I don't, I don't know. Saw the musical. That explained, I think, most of it. Yeah. (laughs) But like, I'd say it's just like any religion where there's like, you know, there's a great brand behind it all where it's like, oh yeah, Christians, we are all perfect and we don't know. It's about power and like the people are typically hiding and doing whatever they need to in the background. And that's what I'm learning about Mormonism. I'd love to start another religion. You have a lot of cult books. Yeah. Yeah. You want to talk about that? We went to mom talk. We went to a mom talk. A it's very a different, different kind mom of talk. mom talk. And see, and now I'm looking back and I'm like, can you just take, can you just take that title like that? Oh, I Unless thought you, you were going to say. an established brand. Wish, wish we went to the mom talk in Utah. <laughs> That's the one clearly we should have gone to. No, I'm not. I'm the, no. We don't drink alcohol or coffee, but we do drink each other's fluids. Oh my. I'm Apparently, actually back allegedly. on. Yeah. Oh, we, we do not. Yeah. I'm actually back on caffeine. So Congratulations. Exciting. How's that working out for you? Not well. No. Not well. I'm starting to regret it. <laughs> like I'll get a, one. <laughs> day three. Oh, okay. So I get a little high and yeah. then like crash completely. And I'm like, I I don't and I'm getting headaches. So I'm like, this is just like when I was trying to get off this stuff. Coming back on is just as difficult. So you were uh you were using pre workout. Mm-hmm. Would yeah. you say that, that that crossed over into like abusing? pre-workout territory no because my pre-workout does not have caffeine okay so yeah it just lasts for as long as like i need it to and then when i burn it off completely after a workout yeah it's done amazing yeah you were using that like during non-workout times though yeah but you're allowed to take it two times a day really Mm kind of like coffee who said that i don't know big pre-workout so you're gonna stick with the coffee or no i mean i've started so i think i have to okay stick with it we'll see I'm in my 30s. I think at this point, like, I just need to. I just need yeah. to. I need to keep up with the four-year-old, so. You need to get, you need to go into, like, full, like, chuggy millennial territory, to, which is like, oh, don't, nobody talk to me until I've had my coffee. Yikes. Well, there's the thing. I need to take it. I have to have cold brew, mm. dark roast, because those are the least acidic. Yeah. But I also hate the taste of coffee, and, like, that's the, like, the strongest tasting get one. Get a syrup. Oh, I definitely got a syrup. But then yeah. also that's like, that's conflicting with my, my nutrition plan. Zero calorie syrup. It's not the one I want. Lactose free milk. Of course. Buddy, of course. come on. A little bit of ice. Put it in your fancy, uh, you want to talk about merch. Your fancy playing house. Mug. Stanley knockoff. Yeah. <laughs> when I say knockoff, Stanley's actually a knockoff of this. Right, right, right. So right. this is the OG. There this is much go. better. Playinghouse.com slash shop. So... Yeah. So we get into the episode. I'd love to get into the episode. Done a lot of therapy. Excited to talk about it. Excited okay. to, give, to give away all of the secrets. <laughs> we'll kick it off then. Been going for about five years now. I actually had my first appointment when we found out you were pregnant. Mm-hmm. And I was like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna. We, we got like another human coming along, right? Because the 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 badness up here, terrible for two people. Even worse for three. Mm. And, you know, new kid, new life, fresh start. I wanted to like, yeah, I wanted to come in with some uh, some good vibes in the holster. So, so that's what made you decide it was time to go. Yeah. 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 Those two sessions, eh, I saw this old guy. Okay. I've seen two old guys now. My most recent old guy, longest therapist I've had. It's been I like don't four like your years. therapist. Yeah. 
Can I say that? You absolutely can say that. My therapist didn't say I can't say that. So I have not stopped saying that. But yeah, I don't like your current therapist. Yeah. I call him Gary. It's not his real name. not his name. But I call him Gary. (laughs) You don't like Gary. No. No. He, from the, 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 hmm. I know therapists are specific to you, right? And they're not meant to say you're right or you're wrong. They're just meant to like give you uh, like prompts to think dif- to think deeper, uh, to reflect on your behavior, to for you to decide whether you're right or wrong, if you want to continue or stop that behavior. Right. But he doesn't seem to approach things like that with you. And will often declare, ah, that person was wrong. Ah, that person's stupid. And it's like, is this how therapy works? With you, he often says that I'm the one in the wrong. So... I don't think you need a you know like a psychological degree or what a PhD whatever it is he has to to see that. Peter, am I often right? Peter is oh, nodding. He says, "Oh, of course." <laughs> I hope the mics pick that up. <laughs> There's like a sniper dot on his forehead. He's like, "Yes, I absolutely agree. Yeah. I absolutely agree, a hundred percent." So you don't like Gary. I've been seeing Gary. Listen, Gary got me through a lot. Oh, absolutely. Of your stupidness. Excuse me? He also got me through COVID, cancer. <laughs> Gary's got me through a lot. Gary's a real one. Here's the thing. Like, my best friend also got me through a lot. Does that mean that she should be my I'm, therapist? Your best friend is in the room with you right now. Yes, Coulter. Also, my other best friend, who I'm not married to. There can only be one best. <laughs> Um, we get each other through a lot. That does not mean that we are in any way fit to give each other advice or to be each other's like standard of truth. You know what I mean? Like we're kind of an echo chamber for each other. We're like, we hold the same values and same beliefs. Right. So if I hear like somebody did her wrong, I'm like, okay, well we need to beat her ass. And then like, we, we both agree on that. That kind of sounds like you and Gary. Let me ask you this. Mm-hmm. Also, does your friend charge you $200 an hour? <laughs> That's the bigger problem right? here. <laughs> Whenever you're mad at me, does that mean your friend is also mad at me? Yes. Oh, that's Correct. awful. Correct. I can deal with you being mad at me, but I can't deal with your friend being mad at me. Okay. Shout out to Gabby. Okay, I guess I'll fix that in post-production. Well. Well, we can't big up Gabby? No, I just I didn't know if you wanted to like out people like that. Out her as my best friend? Gabby's also a fake name. Um <laughs> A letter away from Gary. Interesting. <laughs> Interesting how that works, isn't it? So you started seeing him when you found out you were going to be a dad. Dif- no, you saw a different guy. guy. Okay. Can't okay, even okay. remember this guy. I'll call him Edgar. Whoa. Started oh, seeing- <laughs> it's a, that's a choice. A lot of choices being made today. Blame Edgar's uh, fake named mom and dad. So I saw him for two sessions and like, I just, I needed like a, I needed a stronger, stronger mentor, I think. Mm. See, yeah. that's interesting. Cause like people have different standards for what they want out of their therapist, right? So what like what's yours? I want I want someone who's going to be more authoritative. I don't need to like I don't need someone to like solve all of my problems, mm-hmm. but I need someone to call me out. Okay. I need someone to say like, "Well, maybe let's think about it like this." Right. And I wasn't getting that at the very beginning. And and also like you kind of need to like you need to see a therapist a few times I think to decide. No, for sure. Sometimes you know right away you're like this person is not for me. But I think to truly decide if someone is for you, you need you know you need to give them a couple of sessions, right? Mm-hmm. This person though, Edgar, big up Edgar, <laughs> eh, medium up Edgar. <laughs> Almost right away was like I think you might have obsessive compulsive disorder. You should read these books. Oh wow! And then it turned out I do have it. But well, how, how did you get diagnosed for that officially? I did get diagnosed officially for huh. that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Not by him. By a, by a doctor, by another psychologist? No, by your friend, Gabby. Yeah. <laughs> Gabby's also Gabby's also my my psychologist. Right. As well. So so he was able to pick up on that one and that was great. And then I saw this woman. And at the time I remember like really, really being frustrated at your tardiness. Which is funny because before we started rolling, we had a little conversation about me not starting on time today. Which, you know, after like 15 years together, okay, like has my timing been the greatest, you know, in the last maybe Mm. six months? Am I the one that's typically the late one? Yes. Okay. Even a couple of years. Sure. I'm a cancer survivor. Give me a little bit of grace, please. For the previous 13 years, you know, it's been the other way. And massive supersize up to you. Here's the difference. For getting on time. Um, You 
you used to be on the other side of the pendulum. So it used to be like, we need to arrive at this place 45 minutes early. Yeah. We need to be the first person at this barbecue. We need to set up the cups or else we are rude. And if you are not there with me, you will also be considered rude. And they'll be like, why would you choose this rude partner? So it was almost this like anxiety around. We also need to set up tables everywhere we go, even if it's like a, a dinner that's that's reservation that is being made. Like, can I help you set up these dishes? It was ridiculous. Also, I was often commuting for an hour wherever we needed to go, which was like coming from the city I grew up in or the from Scarborough to like usually downtown Toronto. It always took me an hour on public transit to get anywhere. So yeah, that played a role in me always being late. Not to make excuses. I could have left earlier. A cool. lot of defensiveness. Not defensiveness, but again, the truth. The truth. What about when we lived together and you would be like an hour late for a reservation? But here's the thing. Here's the thing. So not defensiveness, but but truth rather. Um, this man would follow me around the apartment and turn off lights. So I'd be finishing my eyebrows and he'd just turn off the lights in the washroom. We're leaving immediately. Are you crazy? What you've done is added another 20 minutes because now I need to stop and cuss you. And then I have to finish my eyebrows. And I have to stop because I have to stop furring my brows so that I'm making the right shape with those brows. So it's your fault, essentially. And therapy has taught me that. So shout out to therapists. Shout out to counselors. Shout out to, you know, the truth. Because it will always reveal itself. So at the time I had a real problem with lateness mm -hmm. and I saw this therapist and she was late <laughs> <laughs> for all three of the sessions that I had with her. Oh, so maybe she was testing you. That was real frustrating. I mean, maybe because I had no assertiveness whatsoever. Like you're, you're, you're bold. Like you, you will actively push buttons. I, I'm not in like button, button pushing territory. Are we sure? <laughs> Are we, are we entirely sure about this? As like a bit, sure. But like, you know, you do it because it's like it's in your soul. What's the, well, this? That, that felt racial. Let's let's deep dive into that one. No, uh, like I, I mean, we can it's deep dive into soul. it all you want. I'm certainly not uh, not going to dismiss the existence of white supremacy and how I'm complicit in it just by being white. But should we talk about that for a second? You want to deviate? No, we're good. Okay. If you need to, I've read a lot more books on it than you have. So. Oh, that's good. Put the white fist down. <laughs> Put the white fist. Imagine being proud to have read more about black experiences yeah. than a black woman. Yeah. Oh, that's that's good. Sounds like out of the mouth of Gary is what that sounds like. Okay. <laughs> so your current um so Gary, what's your standard for him? Uh, he's got a really cool car. He does. <laughs> what i've heard he's got uh i bet you this car was like peter can you look up the cost of like what would it be like a 2022 uh corvette i don't know if this matters but it was like electric blue i think that that was like a like an extra sometimes to pay more the, color the color matters yeah. yeah like with my car i had to pay extra for the for the color mm. and this thing like every every conceivable upgrade it has and he offered to let me drive it one time and i was like no he's like i know you'd say no and i'm like <laughs> This the was only a reason test. you offered, right? <laughs> it's the only reason you offered. But he's got a cool car. And uh, this dude, listen, listen to what this guy's up to. Every year, flies his entire extended family to a resort. This last year, they went to Jamaica. Wow. Cost him like 40 grand. <laughs> they, had, they had like a butler. And I'm like, I, you're welcome, I guess. Yeah, no, truly. And you're welcome from me as well. <laughs> Without Our insurance me, insurance paid for it. <laughs> without me, there would be no Jamaican resorts <laughs> for Gary's family. Isn't that funny? You're a Caribbean woman. You've caused me an un Let's hear manageable, this. an unfathomable amount of stress. Mm -hmm. I tell him, I download that. I trauma dump <laughs> onto Gary. It's not trauma dumping if it's your counselor. Yeah, it? they just charge for it. And. Then he goes to the Caribbean with his family and oh. it props up the, the local economy. Well, not props up, but like it's, contributes to it. it. Contributes, absolutely. No, uh, do we have that number, Peter? Yeah, it's like depending on options between 110 and 120, 125,000. US or Canadian? 125,000. Like $9 American. No, oh, probably like 95 God. US. That's a lot of money. This thing's so cool. 
And every time I see one of those cars like around town, I'm like, oh, is it him? And then I always check. It's never him. So there's a lot of rich. There's a lot of apparently a lot of rich. rich clearly, white, there's a lot of money dudes, in dealing with. Would you say anxious white men? Okay. Yeah, we we out here have yet to tap into that money, but <laughs> I'll we keep need working a, at it. We need a day of visibility for right anxious white men. Yeah, of course. Yeah. I mean, listen, male uh, mental health is not a joke. Coulter. I often joke about my male mental health, <laughs> but. You know, it is what it is. So that's my therapy journey. Okay. Yeah. Love that for you. It's been great. I will say I enjoy, I, I much prefer in-person therapy to virtual. Okay. You're a virtual girly. I am. When's the last I time am. you saw a therapist in person? My first therapist is the yeah. only one I saw in person. So she, I also started with her when I started, when I was pregnant. Um, so around the time that you started therapy, you're like, you should go to therapy too because I go to it and it's good for me. So it must be good for you. And I was like, you should never tell me what to do again. But then I went. Um, white woman. Plus, it's arch that back. White Bad. woman who, uh, I think I feel like I've spoken about this before, but uh, I I was trying to express my fears with raising my daughter and like growing up in a house where. What is the term? Carpal punishment. Corporal. Corporal punishment. Anyway, we're beating your kid was normal. Um, and. See, that's the thing. That's the reaction that I got from her. And I feel like if if I was dealing with a Caribbean woman, a black woman in particular. What do you think Caribbean people beat their kids? I'm saying canceled. I'm saying that um culture exists and you know we learn more and we do better. And that I would have appreciated having a conversation with somebody who um would be open to that conversation and hearing my experience rather than immediately shutting me down and making me feel like, wow, how can you be on the verge of laughing right now? <laughs> what? Yes. No, you're just like, you hated this woman so much. No, I did. I really, like, I'm still angry to this day because, like, I'm pregnant and I'm scared and I'm coming to you about, like, looking for professional input. And instead, you're, like, basically telling me you're going to call the cops on me. I'm an unborn kid. Like, that was, that wasn't what I needed. The irony is I then had to be your therapist after these therapist sessions. And I was like, I, I got my, I got my, I can't do this. <laughs> I can <laughs> I can barely, I can barely put on my own oxygen mask. I can't put on yours. What do we? Do? Gary's helping me with yeah. mine, or Edgar at the time, Edgar. I guess. Edgar wasn't doing a good job. So I only went to her two, three times, um, and then I ended up getting a new therapist after I gave birth. This was during the pandemic, and you had just been diagnosed, and that was the second time when you're like, "Yeah, this is gonna be difficult for both of us. You should get a therapist again." Unlike the first time, which was really fun. <laughs> And easy. No, I mean, like the first time you told me to go, th go to therapy was pregnancy. And then I stopped with her. And then the second time you said go to therapy was because you'd been diagnosed with cancer. My body was pregnant with tumors. Oh, my. Yeah. That's a. I was going to say when my neck was way. pregnant with tumors, that would have been funnier, Yikes. but it, it wasn't just in the neck. So. Okay. Yeah. Do you want to talk about that a little bit more? No, I can't afford you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Um, so yeah, so then I decided, yeah, I should probably prepare for this. So that I met, um, my next therapist who was an art therapist. Oh, right. Yes. Yes. We're and, gonna, uh, can I give her a fake name? Because she had the name of, uh, um, that might do you remember her, her name? I do remember her Say name. Say her name then. No. She's not my therapist. I want to, I want to give her a fake name. <laughs> Why? Because it's just like, it's fun. That's okay, what we're go doing. Ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Yeah. And it's going to be along the same theme. So her name oh. will be Arkansas. What is the theme? Gary, Edgar, and Arkansas? No, no, no. The theme, think about, think about your therapist's her real- first letter? Think about Arkansas's real name. I don't remember her name. Really? Yes. Oh, okay. It was a state. I, I get it now. Okay, anyway. <laughs> Clearly a state of confusion over here. A state of bewilderment. <laughs> Um, so she, I, I really loved her and she was my first black therapist and that was really important for me at the time. Hell, it still is really important for me. Um, and we met and I was like introducing myself to her. And then at the end of the session, I said, and she's like really excited. She's like, I think we're going to like fit well. Um, she's trying to explain like what the process is for art therapy. Why does he keep breaking out in laughter? Also, use my promo code at Michael's to save 10% yeah. off the, the school supplies you need to buy. <laughs> Um, and so she was saying, 
she was just telling me like what the process was going to be like moving forward and I'm going to pause to give this guy an opportunity. One last one and then I promise yeah. that's it. She just plays an episode of Heart Attack. So at the end of the session, I'm like, oh, and by the way, my husband is recently diagnosed with cancer. Or, I, he, he, yeah, I was like, he has recently done some tests and we're going to find out in a week if he has cancer. And she goes, whoa, what? That's how you ended this? And she goes, this is going to be a big heart attack. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Um, and it was, I really liked that part of, of therapy, getting being able to like put some of the lessons into action. Um, but my, mo my current therapist, um, I don't, I can never remember the type of therapy it is. So there's, um, do you CBT? remember the cognitive behavioral therapy? So that's, that's another type of therapy I've done with a different therapist, but that's not the one that she does. It has a long acronym and it basically, um, means that she pays attention to like my body as I'm speaking. So if I'm like looking away from her. Um, if I'm like fidgeting, like she's taking in all of the senses as I'm explaining to like really tap into the truth. Which I don't know, tell. there's some science around it. She would say that it's not looking. Really? Yeah. Mine's my mouth. What do you mean? Gary will be like, oh, you're trying to hide. You're trying to like hide your mouth from me. <laughs> Which sounds <laughs> kind of like, sounds kind of sexual, but it's not. No, like my mouth will like, I'll always like, I just like I'll end up doing something with my mouth when I'm trying not okay. to ball uncontrollably. Yeah. And I guess yeah. looking away as well. You, like the shame of being sad. Sure. I suppose. Yeah. yeah. But that's a whole like that's a whole like kind of therapy, hey? Yeah, I, I should have looked up the, the the type before I started this. But yeah, absolutely. So when I was um because you know, like you were saying, you gotta date a little with your therapist, right? Mm -hmm. So have like um a consultation. And she was explaining it to me and explaining like the nuances of this type of therapy, it can get very awkward because sometimes we'll, like, we'll just be sitting in silence. And that's another thing with me. I need to fill the silence to move on and like make a joke about it and like giggle and like downplay it a little bit. And she'll just sit there and watch me. Damn. It's like, no, sit in those feelings. What is it? How is your body reacting? She's just like letting you like, like drift out to sea for a second. No, but it's good. You like that? It's, it's good in that it takes away your ability to escape, which is what you're going to do outside of therapy, right? Like, mm. so if you have an uncomfortable feeling, you're able to laugh it off, focus on something else. But like the point of therapy is to get comfortable with that, get comfortable with that discomfort. Mm. Um, so her being like, no, let's go back to that for a second. It's like, oh yeah, I have to do the hard work. Cause like having the soft life, it's hard work. And that's what she's taught me overall. <sighs> Clearly too much hard work for me. I'm never going to have a, a soft life. <laughs> okay. Just a hard, a hard life for me. Sorry to hear that. Yeah, thank you. Okay. I appreciate that. <laughs> it's you apologizing for all of your I, behavior. I, 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 assume, I didn't so. apologize for anything other than having to hear that. Once in a while, Dominique accuses me of losing my train of thought, <laughs> of interrupting, of not having a ton of, ton of clarity, right? Not being super put together and organized. Welcome to the Playing Hells podcast. And it's those days where I realized, man, you know what I haven't taken yet today? My Alaska rhodiola. So every single day you forget to take your Alaska rhodiola? At the time I'm supposed to. <laughs> I, I, I endeavor to take it like first thing in the morning with my coffee. Okay. And then sometimes I'm like, oh God, you know, it's like two o'clock. I got to I gotta do this thing now. Uh, got to get it done. I take it every day, but sometimes, you know, it's a little bit later in the day. And that wasted hours. Wasted hours in truth. Yeah. That being said, don't waste your time, sis. Leave him. Fix your life. Alaska Rhodiola. Woman owned, doctor owned, locally sourced in Alaska. A lot of the world Rhodiola supply comes from China and Russia. Oh, yeah. Apparently, that is a lesser. Um, oh, it's garbage. Well, I haven't tried it. I've only tried Alaska rhodiola. And the fact that it is sourced in Alaska actually makes it more um, sustainable yeah. and a higher- Because they're following the law. Well, they're not farming wild rhodiola. You're not allowed to do that. It's an endangered species. Oh, right really? Now. You have to cultivate it. You got to farm it. It takes five years to grow this stuff. Oh. Insane. Keep sharing. This is very interesting. So. Yeah. Yeah. Keep going. Got a documentary coming out pretty soon. Look at that. Yeah, look at that. Soft plug. Look at that, buddy. <laughs> 
nothing soft over here, especially because this can increase libido. Hey. Whoa, look at that. <laughs> Took it today, feeling pretty clear. Play 15 at checkout, save yourself 15%. You save a lot, we get a little bit, and you're supporting just like, they're such a great team. Such a great team. You're great, we're great. akroseroot.com, play 15 at checkout. Uh, let's talk a little bit about um, couples therapy because we both have two therapists. This is for all my kings out there. Find a dude. I mean, like, like to be with if you want, but I meant like as a therapist. It's a strug sometimes because you're like, oh, I'm the guy, I'm the problem, right? You're, you're referring to couples therapy or? Yeah. Or, okay. So you wish that our couples therapist was a, was a man. Took my side once in a while, yeah. That'd be nice. I don't know if being a man would have changed that. Because right, I'm so objectively in the wrong. I was getting at it, the truth that matters. <laughs> well, then I need someone who lies once in a while. I need someone who operates on my time. Probably going to cost more money than we pay. That's fine. <laughs> it's worth it. <laughs> okay, so why did why did you decide you wanted couples therapy? It's yeah. It's, I feel like if I feel like if I give the reason, it might seem a little like. Just mm, go yeah. ahead. No, I'm insisting you give the answer. Why? Because. Because if I say it, it's going to be like, oh, gross. But if you say it, it's like, oh, okay. Maybe that's like a thing. You know what? I'm actually going to like, I'm going to challenge you to do it because I think like the point of the show is to be sexy and secure, right? And to be sexy in like our security with each other. And so I think it, it, it's going to give men a chance to see the, and women a chance to see the like being vulnerable and being honest about certain things. Um can open up vulnerable conversation. I'm not going to hang you out to dry. No, you don't want to. Just monitoring your body. <laughs> I'll go ahead. Uh -oh. You have a pretty low sex drive. Okay. Which is so weird because, you know, me, but um, there's clearly like, I shouldn't say clearly. <laughs> it's not as simple as I'm just like not turned on all the time. I mean, like we've talked about this. We've done two seasons of this show, right? Yeah. We've talked about this. We've talked about you growing up in the church. I mean, we talked about like the 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 guilt that I felt going to Catholic school. And it's not just one particular religion. It's it's you know growing up in a certain household. It's growing up with certain you know cultural traditions, whatever your cultural traditions are. And so it's a lot to unpack. I don't think that like in my house growing up, it was we were comfortable like joking about sex, mm. but in but didn't really have any substantive conversations about it. Mm. In your house, I don't imagine there was even much joke. It wasn't about a it. joke. So. No. Actually, like, there, so there was a show growing up called Sex with Sue. Sue. Yeah. Put some respect on her name. Absolutely. So it's, it's this old white lady who just spoke about sex completely, like, just very frankly. And so she was had a radio show and she had a TV show. Yeah, she was on Q107 originally, which was the station yeah. that uh, I worked at years ago. She was legendary. Yeah, so I remember, so uh, earlier than I can remember, she would have my older sisters listen to the radio show, um, her being my mom. Yeah. My mom would play the radio show for my older sisters. And like, I know it was an awkward conversation for her. It's not something that she had with her parents. So that was a way of like her still having her sense of comfort, but like showing her daughters that like, hey, you should get this information. And then by the time I was old enough to understand, I would start watching the show with them. <clears throat> and I was probably like, what seven years old so i didn't fully oh understand God. what they're no but like that's good because it's like you normalize these things like t today I, we never taught nia to like give her vagina a, a nickname for example like it this is not cutesy things it's serious huh. and you shouldn't be laughing about it i just realized that I, my parents gave me a nickname for my penis is that why you had to say it like that no, i i can say penis okay <laughs> the fact that you couldn't say even penis. say it because like my parents speak French, but that's not how you say penis in French. At all. <laughs> penis uh, or la penis. Uh. Um, yeah, in our house, it was dinky or your man. Oh, that's- Wash your man. Dinky is weird. Dinky. Okay. You're a little dinky. Yeah, like I hate I hate that. And I did not grow up with that. Like we just can, very can much- Can you call it my dinky from now on? Oh, God. Uh, that dinky. So like you growing up laughing about sex, it, we were a house full of girls. So for my mom, I think it was very important that like it was that never yeah. a laughing- topic it was like this is your body and it's a serious topic and we don't make jokes like that here also like church we didn't go to church very 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 much church. right yeah, yeah yeah like what are they teaching you in church about so what's sex at in church 
There wasn't. Mm. There wasn't. And that's a huge part of like, I think my lower sex drive as well, because it's zero mention your entire like adolescence. And then it's, oh, you're a young adult. You need to go forth and, uh, and, and multiply. And where are my grandbabies? Yeah. Where are my grandbabies? So it's from like, we don't talk about this. It's not something that concerns you to, oh yeah, we need, you, you need to go make children. Also, why, why are you married? What worth do you have? Yeah. 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 <laughs> Precisely. Yeah. Yeah. Precisely. So that's why we started going. Mm-hmm. And what do you think? Like, what do you think you've gained from it? What do you think personal insight? And and success doesn't mean that you're that you necessarily have a higher <laughs> sex drive. Right. Success can mean that you understand yourself better. Success mm-hmm. can mean that you're more comfortable with yourself. So, like, yeah. what does that look like for you? Yeah. Well, I think like being able to have these conversations now and, and like especially open to, um. Like just being able to say like I don't have the highest sex drive in the world, and I, I I've been able to dive into some of the things that have contributed to that. That it doesn't make me like bad or strange, and it doesn't I mean, mean that bond, I'm. <laughs> it doesn't mean that I'm a, like a non-sexual person at all, but it just means like I am tapping into the things that do make me feel sexual. Like what? Um, that's a whole ass episode in and of itself. But like I know that for me, it's it's largely mental. Um, and then it can manifest into the physical. So I don't like, stand a chance, though. <laughs> You're like, you know, like intelligence stimulating conversation. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> Finishing a sentence. Like, ooh, imagine. Yeah, like I, I know that for me, it's largely um, mental and emotional. And then like I can, my body can can follow suit. Um, I think another huge lesson has been that like, you don't need to only go to therapy when it's like reparative. You can go um, for maintenance. And though that was one of the reasons why we went, we also went because we were like, we were doing really, we have been doing really well. Um, and we wanted to keep that up because we yeah. didn't want to wait for like, I piss you off, you piss me off. Let's I now find, wait. okay, let's now find some some support. Therapy by, we wake up at seven, therapy by 6.59. <laughs> wake up already pissed at each other. Like having a bad dream or something. Oh, and that'll, you know? that'll piss me off too. But it's like, you're not, you're not going to wait until your engine explodes. Our producer, Peter's a real car guy. I don't know what the term for it is, but like when you don't change your oil and the sure. car explodes. Is that what happens? Either the engine sees it. The engine seizes, right, Pete? Yeah, there's like buildup and stuff. Yeah. yeah, there's buildup. See, you want to make sure there's no buildup, which means right. you got to change the oil every, whenever your car tells you to, miles. <laughs> so that's how many, well, because they give you the sticker and it's like, come back and- There's a sticker? 3,000 miles. And you're like, I can, the thing at 3,000 miles says, or 5,000 kilometers or whatever, says I'm still like 80%, I'm not coming back. My, com- my car's computer, whatever the hell it is, they program it so that the last time, from the day they lasted my oil change, it will then give me a warning sign to come back in and then they reset it every time. So I have no idea. There's no sticker. Don't put any s- crap on my car. Just, just- you get enough crap in there yourself. Who are you talking to? You mine's mine's garbage. Your car is a bin, a dumpster bin. Only when you're riding shotgun. <laughs> <laughs> that was actually you gotta, funny. that was, that was quick. You gotta funny. give me that. That was good. That was good. <laughs> On the next episode of Our Couples Therapy, <laughs> a transcript from this episode. <laughs> but yeah, in addition to like, we don't have to wait for like a big blowout to seek professional help. I've also learned in terms of like sex drive, um, something that I had told you in the past was like, for me, for me, like I mentioned, having like the mental and the emotional being put uh, being all together can lead to the, the physical. So like if the house is, is, is left nicely, like if you do your, your part in like keeping the house running and raising Nia and making sure that she's good, then like at the end of the day, then yeah, there's probably going to be we're going to be able to have sex and like really like get sexy and enjoy each other because my mind isn't elsewhere. I did like nine loads of laundry yesterday. Okay. Uh, but but then you you came back with like just as important as it is to like keep our home clean, make sure that Nia's fed, all that stuff is also important that like your love language is being acknowledged. Um, and then so, but at the time I fought that, I said, you know, sex is not as important as the cleanliness of our home and the safety of our, of our child. And from couples therapy, I understand. <laughs> I'm understanding that no, like every every love language is important. The the full, like looking at love life holistically, like in, including like your physical is satisfied, your emotional is satisfied. Um, 
they're 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 equal or they're equitable or something along those lines. I don't know. I just heard you saying like whole and full. God damn, you're a fine. <laughs> Y'all can watch too. Damn. Not a lucky man. We got a comment from somebody who said oh, no. that whenever I make a serious statement, you almost deflect by turning it into something sexy. Do you think you're deflecting? No, <laughs> absolutely not. You want to deep dive into that a little bit? No, we need someone here billing us, I think, for me to actually. <laughs> okay, yeah. yeah, I I think I in the same way that you talked about deflecting earlier, 100%, mm -hmm. buddy, just like I'm risen it up. Okay. That's, that's the way, that's how I've operated my entire life. I've had a tremendous amount of success with it. <laughs> and I just kind of like, oh, yeah, let's, how, can we, how can we segue the conversation elsewhere? Okay. Did it make you uncomfortable, what I just said? No, there's nothing that makes me feel uncomfortable. I, that's, not true. that's not true. But I, I think I wear uh, discomfort and vulnerability as armor. And I think I put it out there. Like, I mean, I, you know, like even when I had cancer, for instance, mm -hmm. I was on radio every day. Like I did my mm -hmm. show. I talked about it all the time. I originally didn't want to talk about it, but I did. Vulnerability with like, I'm going to be recovering in real time on camera from a from a stem cell transplant. Yeah. I did that already from a hair transplant. And, you know, like I'm fine with that. I don't, I don't get, people can judge. I'm okay with that. I certainly judge. And uh, I think with, I think it's those like like silence. Like I think that that can be uncomfortable. I think it's that also comes from hosting radio. Mm. Like dead air is the biggest fear at the end of the day. It but also, seems like it at least with radio or with any kind of live broadcasting. Like this is different in that it has like it it lives right. It's yeah. it's ever it fits on the internet. It's forever. Whereas radio, it's so fleeting, it's so immediate. Mm. Even like to a certain extent, short form content. Yeah. Like yeah, you can scroll back, but. You know, it's it's kind of you do it and it's kind of there. Whereas if you're having a deep conversation and something serious is said, you've you've got to bathe in it for a second. Mm. You've got to bathe in that emotion for a second and really like confront it. Yeah. Right? As opposed to it can't hurt me, it can't hurt me, it can't hurt right, me. Right, 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 right. And I mean, who wants to be wrong? Who wants to be, you know, who wants to look like they don't know what they're doing? Can't relate. Delusional. At least you can admit it. Yeah, that's important. Well, I appreciate that. I think like if any episode, like this is the episode to be honest about that and like be honest about like our discomfort and vulnerability. So I, I really appreciate you being open. Thank you. In this episode. Please remember that in our next couples therapy session. Here's me doing it again. Uh, please remember that next time in our next session. We're right. like, Coulter was a good boy this week. No, but even sometimes in couples therapy, I need to be like, uh, I need you not to make a joke about this right now. I need to be serious. Okay, all right. <laughs> I concur. Um, shall we get into pillow talk? Yes. Okay. I'm going to be serious and not make jokes about anything. I'm not saying you can't make jokes. I'm just saying that like, I, I was God, acknowledging. God, holy Christ. It would be a pretty crappy podcast if there were no jokes. And if we had the set from <laughs> season one still. Oh my God. That looked pretty <laughs> crappy. The audio was pretty rough too. All right, would you like to read this or may I? I Oh, would you like to? I'd love to. Okay, go ahead. Pillow talk is the part of the show where we get a little more intimate, and I feel like it's it sounds it sounds silly to it's say it's the entire that, right? episode. Like we just ask each other a very intentional question. I'd say pillow talk is the part of the show where after we've done this like sixty or seventy times, we can sell this to you in the form of a board game, which is or not a board game as like cards. Card game. Don't give it away. What we're trying to do pre orders in now <laughs> forty bucks. We have a number. Twenty nine ninety five US. Oh my god! This man will just say anything that comes to his mind. It's, Plus tax, it's frightening. Plus shipping and handling. <laughs> the handling's a BS fee. What the? The handling? Get out of here. Pillow talk. Do you think handling is? <laughs> How do you envision our intimate life evolving as we grow older together? I think about this all the time, and do you? I am so curious what you think. Do you think about this all the time? Yes. Every time I see old people, and I don't mean like, oh, like. 50s old, 50s certainly, that's like two and a half times my age, but 
I, every time I see like, like an old, like, you know, old, I'm talking like 80 and I'm like, Oh God, it's going to be, I mean, I've had cancer twice. That might not be me, but you know, theoretically, you don't ever think about that. Of course I do. What are your thoughts? I guess I hadn't, I guess I, I don't, I'm not as aware when I'm thinking about it, but when I see an older couple, for example, and I think her name was Rita, Miss Rita, her Instagram account, she's always getting ready to go on a date with her husband yeah. and she's, he's touching her up. Yeah. They're like really flirty and touchy in the washroom as she's getting ready. Um, be us. Couldn't be us. Coulter, I've got my hair straightened out. What is this? What do I have out? Your hair, your hot comb or, you know. You got well, yeah. products everywhere. Well, actually, there's another video of a girl get, doing her hair, like using her curling wand, and she's singing. And dude comes and takes the curling wand out of her hand to sing into it. And she's like, this is why parents need to teach their sons what heat tools are, because why would you Ooh. grab that by the barrel? I can That's smell that video right now, and <laughs> it smells like charred flesh. <laughs> but how do I picture it? Is that the question? How do yeah. you envision our intimate life? Um. Yeah, like I'm, I hope we're able to keep like... The goal is to keep the the sexiness alive. And well, I don't yeah. think that it's it's just a matter of like, yeah, let's have that, lots of sex. But like, yeah, yeah, of course, if it leads to that, beautiful. But I I, I hope that we maintain um, like an, a, a genuine interest in each other's like interests at the end of the day. Like we 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 care about each other's thoughts. Like, what are you what are you reading right now? Like that to me, like that's intimate. Caring about the person on a holistic level and caring about the person, like what they're up to and what they're what they're interested in at the time. And I think that that can be really sexy. And like, I would love to see us continuing to like build new hobbies. Right now, like you huge on production, and it's become a, a whole ass job for you as well. So I'm excited to see you like take on other hobbies and take on other interests. But don't get monetized. See- I need yeah. a hobby that I'm not really successful at, I think. Something that like you're you're open to learning and sure. like that that's largely been production too, but like something that's yeah, also not something that you need to make money from. It's hard for you because I think you can monetize literally anything. Yeah. Any literally anything. Yeah. Which is like like a great problem. Ugh, it's a problem though. <laughs> I need a thing that's just me and I'm like, oh man, I'm really good at this. And people are like, can I pay you to do it? I'm like it's going to be a lot of money. And they're like, okay. I'm like, okay. okay. <laughs> right. But yeah, like I'll see uh, like um, senior couples at the gym, for example, and they're taking like pickleball classes together or they're doing like laps at the, or or what do you call that? Water aerobics and stuff. Like just, just being, still having things that they do together, getting out of the house and, and having fun. To me, like that's really intimate. Being willing and open to be silly and learn in front of each other. My penis is inside of me right now. Like, I don't want to be old. And like, you should I'm watch the way you say that. Gonna be old. But I mean like an old state of mind. Okay. Or it's like, oh, let's go to the, like, senior center. Oh, my God. Couldn't be me. We're going to go, what, we're going to go like play bocce all day? I don't want to do that. But you realize that that generation shifts with each generation, right? Like what people in their 80s were doing back in the 70s is not what people in the 80s are doing today. I mean, in our 80s, the millennials will still be working. Probably, bro. Yeah. Like, <laughs> That'll be. It's no time for the senior center unless you're working at the senior center, I guess. Still taking care of boomers. We'll still be taking care of boomers, won't we? Like seniors today are on Facebook. Yeah, and that's the thing. Like my, you know, my uh, dad is 62. And like 62, when my grandfather, when his dad was 62, that was a very different 62. Very different, exactly. Right? And I mean, also like age expectancy is, life expectancy is a lot greater than it Mm -hmm. used to be. Mm -hmm. In the 1960s, the average life expectancy, I think for for men was like 68 or 69. And now it's like 80. It Mm -hmm. did go down during COVID, which is kind of wild. But you know, like late 70s, like you can expect to live to be about 80. It was certainly much older. The more money you have, the better you take care of yourself, which usually goes hand in glove there. But I just don't want to do like lame, you know, I still want to like, I still want to do fun, exciting things. So what do you want to do? How do you envision our intimate life evolving as we grow older? I mean, certainly different positions. (laughs) Some of the same, you can keep some of the same positions, but. You know, I, I'm not making a joke here. Like that's also a part of intimacy Absolutely. is physical intimacy. 
you know, you might need like a like a harness or something or like a swing. Oh, I don't I don't a know. Swing. A swing sure. sounds fun. Yeah. Yeah, why not? So you could do that. Um, but like oh, I just no, just like being sad and I don't want to be sad and it makes me sad. You said you envision this all the time, that you think about this all the time. Yeah, and I so get what's sad your answer? Um I really hope that we I just I really hope that we have a ton of energy and want to do exciting, fun things. And don't just like, like sit around in the house all day and pray for death. I have a real big worry about that. Okay. So. Is that how you envision life as you get older? And also I want to keep it tight for you, you know? I'm not saying like Joan Rivers level of plastic surgery, especially because that, I was going to say ironically, unironically, I guess was her downfall, but. She died from plastic surgery? No, it could be irony if she used plastic surgery to keep her looking younger, but it was the thing that ended up killing her. Did it? Yeah. She died from plastic surgery? Yeah, she was like, in, well, during a procedure, she was like intubated. Oh, so like her yeah. heart was, wasn't yeah. able to handle it. Okay. No, I think it was like a, she like suffocated or something. Oh my God. I need to do more research. It was like 10 years ago. So God, what a woman, Joan Rivers. But I will like, I will, whatever surgery I need to get to like make me look as young as possible. 100%. The fellow kids meme, that's me. This has been an incredibly sexy and intimate <laughs> pillow talk. <laughs> We're going to go to mailbox. Uh, if you want to send us a question, you can go to playinghousepod.com. Uh, I was going to say slash submit dash a dash question, but just go to playinghousepod.com or you can send us an email at info at playinghousepod.com. This week, our question is, how do you create content after a dispute or a disagreement? You're watching it right now. <laughs> Can you tell? Funny enough, we were arguing right before we hit record. Uh, so how do we shift? How do we record content? How do we make content? I, I, I say let's take a breath. I feel like I'm the de-escalator. And we just ran out of time today. And so we couldn't really do that. Couldn't really take a breath. But I'd say by like minute seven, That'll be a fun game. You can go back and you can you can pinpoint the moment where it shifted. But yeah, I'd say like after a couple of minutes, it's like, okay, we can take a deep breath and mm. unclench a little bit, you know? But sometimes it's it's like it's just like, I, I, I'm not in the right headspace. I can't do this. Thing. Yeah, sometimes it, it, it is like that. And, and, and the big difference is now that we do, now that we create content for ourselves, for our clients, period, we create content full time, um, there isn't that much flexibility and like I'm not in the mood for this we can't get this done because if we don't create there will not be anything created and therefore we will be under a bridge full time yeah yeah so like it used to be a matter of like I'm not feeling the podcast today we're not filming right now let's try to try this again tomorrow that's not an option anymore like we we, we have a schedule and we need to stick to it um so just like Walter said, like acknowledging it. And sometimes it's a matter of we'll get back to this afterwards. But we just like when you go to work, you can't be like, ah, I don't feel like being in this meeting. You got to go to the meeting. Um, but I think that one thing that we do hold true is that we really, really aim to always be genuine. Mm -hmm. So we're never going to come on here and be like, we are the happiest. Oh, my God. How are you doing? I'm amazing. Like You're not going to get that from us. <laughs> what if we were like actually happy and amazing. You're like, no. that would never happen. So. <laughs> But we're honest, though. Like, we're going to be like, yeah, this is what's going on. At the minute seven, you can see that stuff shifted. Like, we're, we're this is our lives in addition to our content. Yeah. So we're never going to put ourselves in a position to, like, act about who we are, act about our relationship, our family, or anything like that. Like, that's when you get into weird territories. Listen, if the sponsorships dry up, though, and we need to, like, <laughs> juice it a little bit, you know? I'll say I would never do a reality show. Mm-mm. Yeah, like the reality show curse is a real thing. Even like, I mean, you could say that a certain element of what TikTokers and, and like like people that are documenting their lives. Vloggers. You know, like YouTubers, and, yeah. vloggers, like a there's- certain elements there's, of it. Is, you were watching someone today. What would you say? She's on like fiance number three or four. Uh, leave it alone. But she- uh, <laughs> looks, I'll tell you this, looks great. Always, The always. more trauma, the better she looks, oh I think. Oh my God. So. But like, yeah, there's an element of script. Like even the podcast, have we got it? We, got, we don't script it, but we organize it so that we know the things that we're going to touch upon. And then things come up organically or like we bounce off of each other so that like it grows and it turns into like what it is. Um, but we don't ever want to have to like fake the funk. I agree. I also think that the way that this podcast has evolved, 
is a direct representation of how well we work together and how mm -hmm. well we're able to not like compartmentalize. Although I do think to your point earlier about like, we well, let's put a pin in this. Yeah. We have some stuff yeah, to yeah. do. We'll get back to it later and respecting that. Absolutely. Um, but also like the compromises that we've made, the way that we work together. And listen, I'm sorry. I'm sorry for being late today. I've, yeah. uh, I've, I've made a real effort to like get the production side of it running quicker and, Sometimes things fall behind and then I exacerbate those problems by not accepting help because I'm like, I just need to get this done. I'm mm -hmm. frustrated. It's running late and I need to get better at that as well. I appreciate that. Yeah. So yeah, I think that's... Which my hands so I know it's real. <laughs> that's largely like what you're going to get from us. That like, And even when it comes to like TikTok content, Instagram, like shorter um, vertical content, um, if we're not in a good space, we're not going to create like comedy videos. Like <laughs> you're a weirdo. We're not going to ever fake it and try to make it a representation of who we are. Because even looking back at that content, if nobody else has any idea that like we were fighting before we filmed that, we're going to know that. You know, it's super helpful. And it's so cringy to watch when we have a video and it's like there's a false start. And we don't end up finishing the video, but I watch the footage afterwards and I'm like, oh, my God, I come across as a huge asshole. What do you mean? Because I'm never an asshole. That's really nice of you to say. That. You <laughs> what do you mean by false no, start? You'll, you'll watch like a video and then like we're, you know, like... It's tense. We're speaking before we okay. start like doing the actual thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I'm like, oh God, that's not a good, yeah, okay. That's actually, that's that's interesting because a good segue for the fact that we're launching a Patreon account. So in time for- All we do is fight on it. Three. You see our divorce? <laughs> The the free version is just like, man, things are going great. The divorce one is just like, okay. yeah. <laughs> kill it with fire. So, so with season three, we're going to launch our Patreon, which is going to include exclusive behind the scenes content. So you'll be able to see like what is happening. Well, we'll keep running the camera. So you'll see what like setup is like. You'll see um, some exclusive um, content that doesn't necessarily make it to the YouTube channel. Um, What's the guy from Patreon? I've not taken a single meeting with them. It's been you and Peter. Yeah. Wait, the, the guy Tom? from Patreon? The guy who works there? Yeah. I don't remember his name. Why? Tom? He's nodding. Which one? Mark or Tom? <laughs> Tom. Tom. Yeah, shout out. Big up, big up Tom big of up Patreon. Tom. <laughs> who could forget Tom? Not me. I never met him, so. So we're going to be launching that in early October. So by the time you watch this, it's the last episode of season two. Whoa. So I Goodbye just season two. Top. Yes. Uh, so when we're back, you can um, become one of our Neighborhood friend, neighborhood friends. I think we started season two with that uh, Miss Miss Be Nasty clip. Yes, that was great. And she follows. I, I don't know if she follows you. She follows me. She follows I the show. She, fo she follows the show. Yeah. Oh yeah. Shout out to Miss Be Nasty. I know who you are. Yeah, <laughs> I'm a fan. Yeah, you are you an only fan? fan? <laughs> <laughs> you can check the credit card statements later. Yeah. Good for you. <laughs> All right. The thing where she like Rich claps fan. her feet back. Behind together Listen, behind we, her. we can talk a lot about this, but can wait we? for the wait for the Patreon. Patreon, yeah. You want to hook up right now? Follow this man at Coulter Talks across the internet. At Dom Doc Creates on Instagram, at Dom Creates No Dot everywhere else. We're gonna try and get that fixed at some that point. That is not gonna help me. They're probably They're not, not gonna help me at all. So, that's so if fun. you can reach out to at Dom Creates on Instagram and ask them nicely to give it to me instead, that would be lovely we are back every monday back with some brand new content some fun new guests maybe we'll put in a little teaser here maybe we won't he does the editing you know who to blame if there's nothing there but most importantly if there's one thing that this episode convinces you to do it's buy merch so <laughs> not therapy <laughs> oh god no no S spend your therapy money with us the free therapy <laughs> we've go. given people come on there you go langhouse.com slash shop Thank you for watching. Thank you for supporting. We will see you in season season three, y'all. I'm going to try to hit it. <laughs>